So we're getting close to the end and what a great two days it has been. Um, it's been quite different, obviously, working through virtual means, but we pulled it off. And I think, uh, you know, we've done a great job and there's, I'll do some thank yous in a little while. But first I want to recognize our outgoing board members who have uh, given so much to our organization uh, over the last number of years. And if we were not social distancing, we would invite them up on stage and we'd present them with their uh, ovation award, a small uh, ovation award re in recognition of their leadership and their service uh, to the um, RNs and nurse practitioners of, of our union through their participation on, on the board level. I mentioned in my presentation to you yesterday about the volunteerism in our union and how much we expect of our volunteers. And certainly that is true of our board members as well. And uh, you know, they, they take on those big picture thinking items, right? Like it's heady work. Like your, your brain sometimes feel like, feels like it's going to explode because there's so much information coming at you and, and the, the requirement to think big and what is good for our whole union and you know, our members right across the province. So I'd like right now to acknowledge our outgoing board members for re region number one, Gina Elliott. Gina served on the board from uh, 2018 to, to, to uh, she just uh, resigned her board position just a few weeks ago because of other challenges going on in her life. But she represented uh, the registered nurses in, uh, she's actually region two, not region one, in the St. Anthony and Northern Peninsula area so well during her time on the board. Region 9 representative, Miranda O'Driscoll. Miranda's been a board member for uh, two terms from 2015 to 2020. And we're gonna put Miranda, there she is, we wanted to get her picture up. Uh, and uh, Miranda has um, worked in public health roles, community roles uh, for most of her career. And she was a strong, strong voice on behalf of our members who work in the community sector. And uh, one of the areas that certainly is expanding and growing. And Miranda took a position with the Department of Health and has had a key role during this pandemic. And I can't tell you how proud uh, I was uh, to have an RNU member as a leader sitting around those tables, uh, you know, at the Department of Health with Dr. Fitzgerald and Dr. Hagee and all the people around. And, and Miranda was there speaking on behalf of, um, of registered nurses and nurse practitioners in this province, making sure that that perspective got to that table and it wasn't forgotten. So thank you, Miranda, for that, you know, just timeliness of being there. And, um, you know, you've been a great advocate, I know, for, uh, for all of our members at that level. Rosalie Gillis. Region 9 representative, there's Rosalie. Uh, Rosalie as well uh, has had two terms on our board. Uh, she's a staff nurse in, uh, no, you're a patient care facilitator in Emerge at uh, St. Clair's. And uh, she's worked at Emerge for a long, long time. Uh, and Rosalie is retiring as well the end of the year. Um, and that's an exciting milestone for her as well. And uh, has been the voice of uh, frontline registered nurses and NPs at the board level for the St. John's area. And, uh, you know, had great relationships with her branches and with uh, connections on the ground with members. And we'll certainly miss Rosalie at the board level, but she's moving on to retirement, so we can't be sad that Rosalie's leaving because she's got some excitement ahead like me. And then, of course, the last person that is leaving your board is myself. And uh, I don't know if they're going to put my picture up there or not, uh, but I've been a board member um, actually since uh, 1988. 
I've been a board member and your president since 1996. So when you, oh, I forgot Danica. Sorry about that, I'll go back to Danica. I'll finish my legacy first. Uh, so I've been a board member for all that long, 24 years as your president and what is it, 32 years? No, yeah, 32 years as a board member. Man, that's scary. It makes me sound really old. And I too, I'm looking forward to retirement. And Danica Pottle, Danica wasn't on my list here and if I don't have it listed down, my brain isn't working all that great now. So Danica was a representative for the Central East region, um, Gander, uh, as you can see, I'm not gonna read off the branches. Uh, Danica started on the board in uh, 2015 uh, and served two terms. And Danica uh, moved on to a management position in uh, Central Health in August. And when she messaged me and she said, Debbie, I'm thinking about applying for this management position, what do you think? And I immediately went back to her and said that I think you will make an amazing manager. You have lots of skills uh, to offer and we need good people in management, so go for it. And she now is uh, quite happy and said she's still learning uh, in our management role, but uh, she is enjoying it. So pretend that we're up here and I'm handing out your ovation awards and thanking you for your commitment and service to RNU uh, by serving on our provincial board of directors. Before I introduce your incoming board, I'd like to say some special thank yous. First of all, to the convention committee. Yvette, Donna Walsh, Tony Moores, Miranda Driscoll, and uh, Brenda Dix. Mwah. See? Uh, wow, all I can say is wow, because this has been an awesome two days. I know it was a tremendous amount of work to, to switch our thinking to a virtual format. And I know on top of t typical convention preparations that last night was such a special, special evening. And all of those things, I had no idea what was happening. I was told to show up at a certain time and that's all that I needed to know. And it just exceeded all expectations. So pulling off an event such as that last night on top of the work that had to be done to pull off a very successful virtual convention, uh, I can do, you know, I can't say enough uh, thank yous for all the work uh, that went into the past two days. To our RNU staff, uh, I know that you've uh, been part of making this convention a success. Um, you're the mach machinery behind the out front people and every single person contributes. Uh, everyone has a part to play in making uh, sure that we have such success, not just as an organization, but certainly during convention. So hats off to you guys. I know there was a lot of things on the fly and you know, sort of learn as we go, but you pulled it off like pros, which is, the, it's just, which is what I've seen you do for so many years. To Eastern Audio, wow, this team is fabulous. When we went to them and we said, we wanna do a virtual convention, they were all in, in a heartbeat. They were, okay, let's, let's get her done. And we can do this and we can do that. And how about this and how about that? It was like, they were amazing. What an amazing team. And uh, we had many practice sessions of, you know, speaking and using the system at their offices to try to work out the kinks. I think we did pretty good. Um, and, you know, what a great bunch to work with. And I know over and over again, Donna would say to me, Debbie, they're just phenomenal. Everything we ask, they're right ready to get it done and they're thinking of things and together we're gonna pull it off and we really, really did. So thanks guys, great job as usual. To the whole hotel staff at the Delta. Well, what a rough time it has been for the service industry in our province and and still is. 
And you know, it was really important for us uh, to try to try to pull off a convention uh, virtually. Once we knew we wouldn't be able to meet in person, it was really important for us to to make this work because we wanted to to support the service industry. We wanted to support uh, the Delta, you know, or the Sheraton, depending on which place we were going to land uh, to have the convention. It was important for us to try to get workers back to work and contribute so that they can, you know, uh, get back on more even keel. And we know that they're still not back on even keel. But they were here for us uh, these past few days. I mean, they couldn't do enough for us in terms of making sure everything was going great. And they're so appreciative of us bringing our convention here and allowing them to uh, showcase again how wonderful they are in terms of uh, their service. Uh, we had a fabulous meal last night. Uh, the board had all of our meals here because we wanted people to physical distance. I mean, the food was amazing. The service it was amazing. So uh, please join me in a round of applause to the Delta staff. They were fabulous. To our photographer, Paul, who was going around and taking pictures last night at the gala. He was just here, there, and everywhere. And uh, I'm sure we'll see the fruits of his labor. To all of our presenters, those who came live and do, who did videos, wow, technology is wonderful. People were just here, right? Like they just showed up. All of a sudden, they were on our screen, and they were in Ottawa or Vancouver or wherever they were sitting in their homes, you know, and, but yet we felt like they were present. Uh, our parliamentarian, Brendan Doyle, uh, Brendan sat over there, and I'm sure during our business every now and then I'd look over and he'd do a nod and make sure, because I, I was just connecting, making sure I was doing the right thing, especially around the resolutions and constitutional amendments and... Uh, Brendan is always a, a fabulous support for us, um, our organization. And then our special virtual guests who, uh, who came and joined us virtually. Uh, you know, Rick Mercer last night, I, I, I'm still not over that one. And uh, all of the people that zoomed in and participated uh, in our event, uh, thank you very much. So... That's all my thank yous, there's a lot of them. And now I would like to take a few minutes to introduce your incoming board of directors. And okay, I think we're gonna do some pictures, perfect. So we'll start at the executive level. So proud to introduce to you Yvette Coffey, registered nurse who will be your president as of January 1st, 2021. Your vice president, wait for the pictures, Mike Fagan, registered nurse working in community health in Cornerbrook, will take up his new role. The, the new roles for the board start January, January 1st, 2021. Secretary Treasurer, Tony Moores. Executive Director, John Vivian. Region 1 representative, Ashley Jones. Region 2 representative, we actually need a by-election, which the board will be discussing at our meeting in December. Region 3 representative, Stephanie Legg. Region 4 representative, Krista Philpott. Region 5, Brenda Dix. Region 6, Nancy Healy Dove. Region 7, Mark Aylward. Region 8, Nikki Parsons. Region 9, Kim Parsons. Jessica Dwyer Milley. And Jody Nolan. Please join me in welcoming your new Board of Directors. Now I just have to...
So I have the great honor of introducing your incoming president, Yvette Coffey. Yvette Coffey is no stranger to RNU. She has a long history of union activism and has, has been a strong leader for our union. Yvette has served as RNU vice president for the past seven years. She spent 16 years as president of our largest branch, Branch 3, the Health Sciences Center, and 26 years as a shop steward. Yvette currently works at the Dr. H. Bliss Murphy Cancer Center, and she has more than 30 years of nursing experience. She has worked in many areas of nursing, including oncology, cardiac care, outpatients, intensive care, neurosurgery, and medicine. She is a mother and a proud grandmother. And one thing that you'll learn quickly about Yvette is that she has tremendous love for her family. Yvette will be a strong voice for registered nurses, nurse practitioners, our patients, their families, and our communities in our province. I have seen her passion at work. I've known Yvette for many years now. She sometimes was a bee in my bonnet when she was branch president, and many times when I was president, she'd get up to the mic and, and I'd sort of go, okay, here comes the vet again. Uh, and, but it was her passion that came through in every time that she spoke. She spoke because she cared. She spoke because she wanted to make things better for registered nurses, and she wanted to be part of positive change. I've worked with Yvette now as Vice President on the board, and it's been such a pleasure to be able to work by her side. We've, um, you know, uh, we've done a lot of debating together, a lot of um, discussion around issues. Uh, she's been a tremendous support for me. She's always had my back. And sometimes now she say, she'd sometimes say to me, I was like that, wasn't I? I used to be that crooked person every now and then, wasn't I? And I said, yes, Yvette, but you know what? Being crooked is all right as long as it comes from the heart. She's always there to fight for what is right. She has the biggest heart of almost anyone I know. She's driven, let me tell you, because she takes on so much. She wants to give so much of herself. I know. Aaron Yu will be in good hands under Yvette's leadership. Please join me in welcoming your incoming president, Yvette Coffey. take off her mask. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. That was awesome. Good afternoon, everybody. Wasn't last night a fabulous, fabulous celebration of our president, Debbie Forward? It was. It was awesome. Even though we couldn't gather to celebrate in person, I know Debbie felt the love and support from her members and our community. I am humbled and proud to stand before you today as President-elect of the Registered Nurses Union of Newfoundland and Labrador. I have been nursing on the front lines for 30 plus years, and I've been a union activist for most of those 30 years. As Debbie mentioned, I started off as a shop steward and served as the branch president of Branch 3 for 15 plus years. And for the last seven years, I have worked alongside Debbie as your vice president. I grew up in the small community of Angels Cove on the beautiful Cape Shore in Placentia Bay, where my family still resides. Although I, have contemplate, I had contemplated being a journalist at one point, believe me. Deep down, I always knew that I would be a registered nurse. 
After three decades working on the front line, I can honestly say I love nursing. And I would choose this career again in a heartbeat. I also believe I was always destined to be an activist. I remember stepping in to stop a bully in elementary school and feeling indignant when a teacher treated a fellow student unfairly related to their socioeconomic status in our community. I was advocating before I fully understood what it meant. I've had great mentors throughout my life, the first one being my mom. She viewed every issue through an equity and inclusion lens. Mom's passion for social justice, equality and inclusion helped shape the person that I am today. As registered nurses and nurse practitioners, we advocate every day for our patients and our health system. We advise the families of loved ones about self-care. At some point in our careers, each and every one of us can recall saying, now my darling, you're no good to your loved ones unless you take care of yourself. Yet, we tend to leave ourselves last. We push through our shift short-staffed, without adequate breaks, trying to get all the work done to ensure our patients get the care they need and deserve. We miss breaks, work late, eight and 12 hour shifts become 16 or longer. We work overtime so that our coworkers aren't short, even though it's our day off. We have been in this pandemic now since the spring adding to an already overworked, understaffed healthcare system. I know you are tired. I am too. But please know that the Registered Nurses Union is here in your corner, just as we've always been. We hear you and we are listening. I am eager for the new year I'm looking forward to working with your board of directors, John Vivian, the executive director, and our team at the Registered Nurses Union to stand in your corner and continue the good work of your union. Second waves of COVID-19 are happening across Canada and around the world. Newfoundlanders and Labradorians need to remain vigilant and follow public health guidance and directives. We also need to keep our healthcare workers safe. A top priority for the Registered Nurses Union will be supporting you on the front lines of this pandemic. Debbie and our team were the driving force behind advocacy efforts to protect healthcare workers in Newfoundland and Labrador. We will continue to be that driving force. This means ensuring that our joint statement on PPE is followed. This means you get an N95 if you determine one is necessary. Along with COVID-19, we will also focus on initiatives to address staffing issues. After years of advocacy by RNU, our province is now building an acuity-based staffing model. Staffing based on actual patients and actual data could be transformative. We'll do everything we can to make sure that this system is built correctly. I look forward to collaborating with our nurse practitioners to bring their issues forward, to continuing RNU's advocacy work around violence in the workplace. You should never go to work feeling unsafe or wonder what might happen if you are left alone with a patient or threatened by a family member. We will continue to promote the advancement of registered nurses and nurse practitioners to be a voice for our patients and a strong defender of our publicly funded healthcare system. I am committed to be your voice on the task force 
to develop a 10-year health accord, to bring forward your concerns and ideas. I look forward to working with Sister Elizabeth and Dr. Parfrey. Town halls for this task force will start next week. Please keep an eye to your emails because we will be sending you an email about this. Our voices need to be heard and we need to sign up. Erin Yu will also be your advocate as a province as our province grapples with economic recovery. I heard from Premier Fury today congratulating me on my new role. I look forward to meeting with him in the future to continue the, to continue the advocacy work for our members. We will continue clarity and build on all that our union has already done to protect and champion our role in healthcare. Erin Yu is in the early stages of developing a media campaign that will help position us for the road ahead. And I look forward to completing this work through a proactive lens. I also look forward to exploring further opportunities like this. While we've all missed meeting in person this week, it's incredibly important that our union continues to engage and connect, and we have. We will keep finding ways to move forward in this virtual world, expanding the role of communications, online learning for our volunteers and our members. There are many projects on the horizon, and we have much to accomplish together. I know it's been said that I have big shoes to fill. Well, Debbie already told me she's taken all her shoes with her. <laughs> I won't try to fill her shoes. Impossible. But we are the same size, as an FYI. <laughs> I'll have my own shoes. Some days, they'll be little heels. Other days, I'll need my runners. But know this. I will serve you to the best of my ability so you can focus on our patients, our residents, and clients who rely on your expert care. I will have an incredible team by my side. We have very experienced and knowledgeable board members, as well as new representatives who will bring insight and new perspectives. Your new vice president is from Cornerbrook. Our board represents all regions of our province. Over the past few weeks, I've gained an even deeper appreciation of the great work being done by our staff at Provincial Office, and I am really looking forward to working with our team. Like Debbie, your board of directors and I will gain strength and motivation from you. From the 5,300 registered nurses and nurse practitioners, working in communities across Newfoundland and Labrador. One of the first things I will do as your president is to arrange to meet virtually with all our branches. I want to connect with registered nurses and nurse practitioners from across our province. I want to listen to your stories, to your concerns, your hopes. I want to find out how we can engage better with our members and strengthen our organization from the ground up. The World Health Organization designated this year the year of the nurse and midwife. And oh boy, it was. Around the globe, nurses stepped up. We showed once again the critical and integral role we play in healthcare. The theme for International Nurses Day 2021 a voice to lead, a vision for future healthcare. We've seen throughout our history there is strength in the collective, power in numbers, nurse power. Together, our voice will help shape the future of nursing and healthcare in Newfoundland and Labrador. I am thrilled and excited, and I am ready to be your voice. Thank you.
Now, isn't that a leader? CRNU is in very, very good hands. Thank you, Yvette, for those inspiring words. You almost inspired me to want to come back and work casual so you could be my president. Come on. But that's not her. happening. <laughs> I'm going to retire. We'll but. find a job for you, David. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I know our members really appreciated hearing those words from their leader, their new leader. Uh, and I'm sure they were just as inspired as I was. So I'm looking now to the organizers to see what's next on our agenda. My sheet, I have slideshow. Am I right about that? No, I'm not. Mm. Oh, yes. When I have to. Oh, my. One final little thing. Okay, see, I, they keep me in the dark about a lot of things these last two days. <laughs> Hi, Debbie, I'm here with some members of Branch 29 at Carpenter General Hospital. We want to thank you for your service over the years. You've been a great leader for our union. We wish you great health, happiness, and a happy retirement. Congrats, Debbie, on your retirement. All of us here at Branch 32 are sending you our best wishes as you embark on this new chapter. Hello from Branch number 20 in St. Lawrence. Debbie. On behalf of the registered nurses of U.S. Memorial and Community Health, we want to thank you for being our leader, our advocate, our expert, and the list goes on. Congratulations, Debbie, on your retirement. You deserve it. You're a strong, courageous, and selfless nurse who has worked hard to promote the interests of RNUNL. Again, thank you so much for everything that you've done for us. We appreciate you. Hi Debbie, on behalf of Branch 4, the Waterford Hospital site, we'd like to say congratulations on your retirement. Your commitment to the nursing profession throughout the years has been amazing. Hi Debbie, congratulations on your retirement. Now you will have time to enjoy the things that bring you pleasure, like spending time with Avery. Thank you for everything you've done for us over the years, and happy retirement. Congratulations. Congrats. Happy retirement, Debbie. Um, I wish you many, many, many years of happiness and lots of trips and lots of play dates with your granddaughter, Avery. You worked so very hard and you gave yourself to the RNs in Newfoundland and Labrador, and no one is more deserving. When I was a young nurse, you took on the role of union president, and it was inspiring to see someone I knew in such an influential role. I have appreciated your leadership, publicly voicing our passion for health care with the heart of a nurse. Hi, Debbie. We're the executive of Branch 25. We just want to wish you congratulations on your retirement, and thank you for being such a fierce leader for us for so many years. From the recovery room of St. Clair's. Thank you for all your hard work and dedication over the years. It was very much appreciated. On behalf of Branch Street and myself, I wish you a wonderful retirement surrounded by the people you love doing the things you love. Debbie, just want to say you've been an inspiration to us all these years that you've been our president. We're sure going to miss you and we just want to say all the best in your retirement. Cheers. So happy retirement. Thanks for all your hard work. We wish you all the best. Congratulations, Debbie. Congratulations. 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 Happy retirement, Debbie. Happy retirement. Congratulations. Congratulations, and we will miss you. Mwah. Oh, man, oh, man. You're breaking my heart here. Thank you so much. It's, um, is this where I'm supposed to say my goodbyes now? Do you have my quote? I don't have my notes, no. I don't have any notes now. Oh, I have a quote. That's the most important thing. To, uh, the rest of it, I'm sure I can do it as I go. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Karen wrote some notes for me, and I'm probably going to totally ignore them. Uh, but we're getting close to closing uh, our 27th biennial convention. And, um, you know, that little video, I was pretty good till then. Shouldn't have done that, see? Um, it's hard to believe that um, this will be the last time I'll stand in front of you. 
well, you know, I don't know. I've still got how many weeks left to, to, to be your president, so you never know. There might be a crisis or something, but certainly the last time when I will close a convention. And this certainly has been a different one, which I've said over and over again, and I've missed, really missed having my members sitting in front of me and having those personal connections. And certainly when I made the decision to retire, uh, I, I dreamt about what my last convention would be like and what I, what I saw was having all those hugs with my members like that's I just picture myself going around the room and everybody wanting to hug me and you know and all that type of touchy-feely stuff which is really important part of who I am <laughs> and it was anything but that because I couldn't hug a soul and uh, members you know we wanted to keep them safe so they weren't in the room so even though I didn't get that everything else just surpassed everything I could have ever thought um, the celebration last night was beyond my expectations and um, so many kind words from so many people and it means a lot, you know, like to hear people say thank you. you. We underestimate the importance of those words, people saying thank you. It just, it just means so much. And um, last night meant a lot to me, and I know it meant a lot to my family. And it was very special that they were here to, uh, to appreciate the love. Uh, that came through in that celebration last night. So thank you very much for that. Um, I have absolutely enjoyed every single day as your president. I think back, you know, in terms of uh, the role that I've been in, and I, I think to myself, you know, is there anything else that you would have wanted to have done? And there is nothing, like there is nothing that could ever compare to the last 24 years. And I wasn't as confident when I started, but as I worked into the role, I just felt like, like I'm just meant to be here. Like I, I, I just feel it and I felt the passion and I, I just felt like, oh my God, I got the best job in the world. And it really felt every single day, even those terrible days, that it was still the best job in the world. And I'm really glad, you know, that uh, the organization has grown under my leadership. And, and I'm not going to go into all the people who were a part of it, because it's not about me. It's, it was about the collective. And it was always about the collective and the people who held me up in the times that I needed to be held up. And I'm pleased, as I said in my speech yesterday, that Aaron Yu is in a good place. And I know we're in a good place after that speech by the leadership that is going to come behind me and other board members that are moving on. You are so well positioned for the future and we have so many successes to build upon. I'm excited to pass the torch of President to Yvette. And I'm excited to look at the new board coming in for the perspectives and new perspectives that will be part of that team to support Yvette and Mike and Tony on the executive team. So there was a quote that I saw on Twitter uh, a few weeks ago. And when I read it, I said, oh my golly, that is what I want to say right at the end of convention. I don't know who said the words. It was. Um, I know who tweeted the tweet, but I don't think it was this individual's words. But this is what was said. Leadership is not a sprint. It's not even a marathon. It's a relay. We work today not because of the project of change, not because the project of change is one we will finish, but so that others have a better place to start. And it is my hope that I've left RNU in a better place to start with their new leadership team. It's been quite a ride. It's been a great journey. And on that note, I officially close our 27th biennial convention. Solidarity, everyone. Solidarity.
Thank you, everyone. I want to say travel safe. Our board is traveling. The rest of you at home, enjoy your evening. Thank you very much.